Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents podcast. And I'm being joined by Bradley, aka Sergeant. How are you doing, man? What's up, brother? I'm good. I'm good. Doing well. Good. Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, what about you, Chris? How are you doing? Pretty good. Now that the Capitals are one sixteenth on the way to uh, oh, geez, here we get go. it back out of your system. Counts. Get it out of your system, Chris. We know the NHL playoffs are upon us. Get, so, just get it out of your system because we know well, how big see, of a cap you are. are very bitter. Your teams are down 0-1 in their series. You're bitter. Hey, you know Brad's what? even more we... bitter because his team lost to my team in five games. Listen, totally dogged. did the Golden Knights not play the Sharks last year <laughs> in the playoffs? And who won that series? Thank you. Yeah, yeah but they put up Try five points up five on you guys. And no so... comment. Try to give up five goals tomorrow and we'll No talk. comment. Listen, get before we get too far here, into this podcast, I want to say a quick shout out to uh, Sergeant Kicker's wife, Emily. Uh, she took it upon herself recently to put together some t-shirts for this podcast, uh, sent over a few renders of uh, things she was working on, and three of us collectively agreed on a couple different designs, and you're going to be seeing them on uh, my channel as well as Sergeant's channel, so if you ever see us streaming video games, come by the stream and uh, check the shirts out. Eventually, from what I'm being told, um, they are going to be going up for sale, so if you like what you see, uh, Emily's going to be selling them, and, you know, we can use all support we can get, you know, you'd be supporting them all around, uh, I think it's going to work out for everybody, so um, again, shout out to her for doing that. Um, I did want to run something past you guys, uh, something that uh, people have been DMing me uh, over on Instagram and Twitter after uh, our airing of the second podcast. Um, I'm not going to pull a Antonio Brown here and completely leak the DMs, but I will say the general um, commonality with the questions is that people, number one, they want to know what exactly they have to do um, to be a guest on the podcast potentially and um, whether or not we are going to have guests. So let's talk about that kind of openly here instead of off air so that people who are listening that keep asking those questions kind of get some closure and some answers. So number one, would you guys prefer that we have guests on for the entirety of the podcast? Would you rather we have special guests like on certain podcasts and not every single one um i kind of like the idea of special guests but i mean we could we could probably do both i Manage agree it. with both but you know i don't think every podcast we want somebody on the entire time either or yeah it comes to three and a half cent podcast. no 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 so um by special guests i don't mean that they're going to be on the entire time uh, if you guys remember kind of what we did with NFL Talk Live, my previous podcast with uh, Purple Swordfish, we did call-ins. So that's what I mean, is people can call in, uh, they can ask us questions, they can be involved in some conversation, but they're not going to be the mainstay of the podcast. They're going to be on briefly, um, let their voice be heard, their question be heard and answered by the three of us. What do you guys think about that idea? I, like I don't that mind that so much. That's pretty good. I like that. And, you know, if there's somebody who wants to be a special guest for a segment of, we can all work that out, too. Yeah, I'd, I'd be totally down for that. And I can tell you from, based on my previous podcast experience, uh, that has worked out great. Um, so, if you guys are listening and you're thinking about doing a podcast or, you know, jumping on to ask a question, or if you have any questions really about anything on the podcast, send me a Twitter DM. Uh, my DMs are always open. Um, send me any kind of questions you have regarding the podcast, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to kind of getting the viewers more involved in the podcast so that it's not just the two and a half of us. I mean, the three of us. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, I don't know why you're laughing because you're the half sin. No, I'm, okay, I'm not going to confirm that. We're going to leave that up for debate. I'm not confirming that. <laughs> Sarge, what's been new with your life, man? What's new? Oh, uh, man. Just kids. Yeah, kids. Are they still kids doing are dumb stuff every day? Man, they're kids. They do dumb stuff every day. Every single day. Every day they do something. 
All right. So what's the uh, what's I mean, new in we, the House of Horrors? We actually we actually submitted a uh, a video to America's Funniest Home Videos a couple weeks ago. That show is still around. Yeah, it's still around. We what? never heard any. We haven't heard anything back yet. But who's the host? Bob Saget. No, it's the guy who played Carlton on uh on Fresh Prince. No way. Yeah, he's the host. Oh, now. He is the guy. Yeah, he's the host. Who sued uh, Fortnite for stealing his dance? Oh, probably. I don't know. Maybe. Carlton Banks. How about yeah, that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we sent this video in. It's the girls are trying to figure out if somebody pooped. So they uh, <laughs> they're turning around, pulling pulling the diaper open and looking inside. No poop. Turning around, pulling the diaper open. It it was funny. It's cute. It's funny. They allow that kind of stuff on American America's funny. As long as you don't show anything, I mean they. But I mean, you're better off sending a video of you getting kicked in the balls and getting on that on getting on that show. Yeah, that's true. That that's seems true. to be the only way to get on there is to get hurt. <laughs> what about you, Chris? What's been new in your world aside from the fact that you take three naps a day? Right. <laughs> you got to get that uh, beauty sleep, and it's not has started working yet. In the way and into baseball and hockey season. Realistically you know speaking. How far do you think the Capitals are going to make it in the playoffs? Realistically speaking, I don't see why they can't get back to at least the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, I could, I could see them getting to the Eastern Conference Finals. I don't see them making it to the Cup this year, though. They could, depends on, uh, especially if Tampa's not there and they play uh, Toronto or Boston. I think they have a chance. Mm. Well, Tampa. Tampa got upset in the first, the first, uh, first game, right? And the Caps handled Tampa the last time they played them a couple weeks ago. So, I mean, uh, they have a chance to go back to back. I'm not saying they will, but they definitely have a chance. Well, well you I'm, know. I'm still pulling for the uh, Golden Knights, uh, despite them being down 0-1 at the time of us recording this podcast, which is April the 11th. Um, I think I may be going to either game three or four, um, both of which are being played in Vegas. Um, hopefully, the Golden Knights don't fall too far um, in the playoffs as far as this set of this bout with the sharks hopefully we can uh start winning games and hopefully win in six or less lost the last five playoff games so i wouldn't be too encouraged (laughs) you're such a jerk dude you're such a jerk here we go here we go literally anyone other than the capitals winning the entire nhl stanley cup i'd be totally for that just, <laughs> doesn't matter to me. just to shut Chris up. Shirt. I'm still going to wear my shirt because we will always be the 2018 champs. <laughs> You're such a pompous child, you know that? You, you never, you, you don't ever celebrate the Ravens Super Bowl? So, I mean, come on, give me I a break. I did, there. that year that it happened, and that's it. Guess what? I was over the Super Bowl like a month after it happened. I'm like, okay, well... We're we're world champs now, but guess what? Off season begins, and now we're defending champs. That's all it is. You're a Super Bowl champion for 24 hours. After 24 hours, you are a defending champion. Simple as that. Is it though? Is it that simple? It is. Unless you're the Patriots, well, where it's a guaranteed Super Bowl win year after year. Well, yeah, because I mean. Because they cheat. They have, they have no competition in their division. So, But the Jets rolled out new uniforms. I do. I was just about to talk about that. There's a lot of hate, but I will say, I, I personally think they're pretty cool looking. I like the color scheme, especially the alternate all-black jersey that they're going to be coming out with. It looks really Copy cool. Copy of the Eagles, number one. Uh, looks just like the Eagles. Number two, I think that those green helmets and the green jerseys would look great for the color rush but as their uh weekly uniform i think they more look like an arena football team what is the rule do you either of you guys know what the rule is regarding alternate jerseys and how often a year they can wear them is it twice 
I, I think no that they've kind of relaxed that rule because of the Rams. Because the Rams... They wear white at home and stuff? Well, the first year the Rams were uh, in existence in L.A., you could only wear alternates twice. And they had to wear, like, those newer blue, that other blue that they had. Yeah. With the white stripes a couple times on the road. Mm -hmm. And they looked horrific. And so they've laxed the rules. So the Rams will wear those jerseys all year next year at home. Interesting. Old school uh, blue and gold. And then I think in the 2020-21 season, they're going to unveil new uniforms. And I don't know why. I don't know why they don't just keep those damn uniforms and go back to the old ones on the road. I don't know. Because they're classic, yeah, I don't get it either. They're classic uniforms. You know, don't overthink it. And maybe that's what they'll do is like a new school version of it. But, you know, when you have a classic uniform that's one of probably the top five uniforms in sports why change it i don't get it i don't ever get why they went to that washed out blue and that washed out gold because <laughs> it looks like crap compared to the old school i actually yeah. didn't like that one too much i didn't like it which one the washed out blue and gold yeah yeah it looks stupid there's a couple of jerseys we've seen some iterations that i cannot stand like remember when the broncos came out with the spiral socks and the brown jerseys i think that was for the af <laughs> was that when they wore like the ups looking yeah like the creamsicle type colors well i know in the afl anniversary season they wore like yellow and brown jerseys and brown pants and brown helmet and uh, people called them like ups yeah they, they look like ups employees exactly um, but yeah, going back to the alternate jersey thing, um, you know, I, my favorite jersey by far is a Ravens all black jersey. And from my experience, I think they they're only allowed to wear that twice a year. Someone correct me on that. Someone fact check me on that. But I'm pretty sure it's only I think twice. that's right. But I don't know if they've laxed it for the Rams, if they've laxed it for other teams. But I know at one point in time that. I think they've laxed too is they banned you from changing your helmet because of safety concerns, mm -hmm. which I don't understand at all. Cause if you have a different helmet, it doesn't have to be up to the same standards anyways. So I, that, that didn't make any sense to me. So we're talking about not only changing the artwork, but also changing the material of the helmet. No, I think like if the Ravens wanted to wear, like remember the, the like the B shield thing that used oh, to be there. Oh yes, yes. So if they wanted to wear those helmets, I don't think they could until like a couple of years ago that they lacked that. But I know for a few years you could not wear a different helmet. This is true. No, you're right. You're and right. it didn't make sense to me because you know it's going to be up to the standards anyway. So what the hell difference does it make? Right. I, I agree. Totally agree. Um, switching gears real quick, uh, I wanted to talk about or at least touch on something that is uh, kind of important to me because I'm a gamer and I'm most known for doing Madden gaming. It sucks to see that a game that's already not doing too well do a little bit worse with the help of uh, some content creators or singular content creator that had screwed up royally again, <laughs> really badly. Um, I wasn't gonna say his name, but honestly, like, who cares? I'm gonna say his name because he's probably in jail and he can't see this anyway. J Mel Flow. If you guys don't know him, he's popular Madden YouTuber. He's his claim to fame is his clickbait thumbnails. Recently, uh, was arrested for his second t second time arrested for uh, animal abuse. This guy uh, previously had tweeted out an image of his, uh, I think it's a Dachshund dog. I don't know what kind of breed it is, but uh, 
I think so, but I'm not really sure because you know why I'm not sure? Because in the picture, it's taped up. He's got like duct tape oh, on its legs, and he's got like the mouth cover. Unbelievable. He's got, why like, would anybody do that? He's got the nose duct tape with like one nostril open so the thing can still breathe. Jesus. So somebody, I guess, I like... turned him in. And, for uh, good reason. For good reason. Oh, good. Yeah. Honestly, like if that's that's yes, it's animal abuse, but at the end of the day, it's abuse. And even worse for the dog, the dog is a voiceless victim. The dog can't pick up the phone and call nine one one. The dog can't ask or run for help. You know, um, but it's just it's just so disappointing to see a guy like that. Um, that's well, people are sick in the head. That's got status as a, uh, you know, he's had notoriety as a Madden YouTuber. Uh, from, why, from what I understand, he also says he's a Christian, which, as a Christian myself, I'm not in a place to place judgment on someone. But at the same time, I think it's not, it's absolutely evil for someone to do that to anything with a heartbeat. You don't have to be good to be Christian. Yeah, I know. I mean, I mean, I saw the picture like, and I was sickened. Technically, the guy who shot up those Muslims in the uh, mosques in New Zealand was Christian. Was he? I believe so. Did anyone actually read. confirm that? That's what I read. You know, his from what I read, his reason for doing it was to prove a point that even in places with really strict gun laws, you still get terrorism. Hmm. Well, that guy was, I was an idiot. Yeah, that guy, that guy. There's a special place in hell for that guy. Yeah, I understand he left like left behind like a seven page manifesto, uh, which at one point he writes sub to PewDiePie. <laughs> I, I'm dead serious. I'm not kidding. By the way, it literally says <laughs> subscribe to PewDiePie. It's a nice name drop there. So yeah, it's it's a weird time we live in, man. It it really is. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, man. Like, one of the guys that we both know that we kind of don't talk to anymore for some, for reasons that I don't I understand. Exactly what you're talking about. Um, he posted something on Twitter about when did, ra- when did, when did, no, no. When did uh, terrorism start? And the earliest date he had on there was like 180. And Which is? No, that was just the earliest date he had on there. Oh, okay. Technically, terrorism would have started way before that. Anytime there was guerrilla warfare. Mm-hmm. So, like, ancient Romans would have done it. Because, I mean, they took over entire countries just slaughtering innocent yeah. people. And it's way before them, too. So, it's it's just a, it's a crazy world from the start. It just, yeah, and I it, think it just gets more notoriety to, today than it did way back then. I think when you take all those things and you compound it with people being overly sensitive and unwilling to talk matters out, and because it's, it's a lot easier and instead of talking things out like regular people, it's a lot easier to run away, block, and scream yell at people instead of talking about like regular people so this whole jmail thing you guys know me i mean i'm i'm a big advocate of pets and stuff every once in a while uh, this is actually probably my my best uh most responded to tweets anytime i put on twitter hey guys here's a picture of my dog respond to this tweet with a picture of your pets um i get like 30 40 responses to each one of those dude and it's so cool to see these different people with their different pets. And believe it or not, one of them actually had a picture of a cat that looked like it was oh. smiling. I didn't think that it was possible for those evil things to smile, but um, I'm just kidding. If you own a cat, it's not Cats evil. Cats are terrible people. They probably are terrible people trapped in cat bodies, but I don't know this. But I, I'm just saying I've never met a nice cat. Just saying, putting that out there. I'm not saying that there aren't any good ones out there. But... um. It's so cool to see people's pets whenever they post that. 
And so, like, when I see pictures, like an, an old picture, this was from JML's first arrest with a dog um, being tied up with uh, duct tape or whatever that was, um, my heart broke. Um, number one for the dog, but number two, like, the motives. Like, what what was he hoping to gain from this? Was, was this even something he posted? Was it a, a leaked image? Yeah, it seems um, weird. Why would... To post it was probably like for, that after you already went to jail for, for it. Views and clickbait. Probably, probably. Um, but here's the thing, right? So, like I said, he's a he's got quite a following on YouTube, and you know, YouTube is mainly children, very impressionable children, uh, who will stand by their favorite YouTuber regardless of whatever it is. Um, I, for one, hope that I never. I'm not going to say I never want to become popular, but if that does happen, take into account the whole spectrum of the situation. Don't blindly support me. That's dumb. So that's kind of what happened on Twitter. Um, so speaking of speaking of stuff like that, um, that guy can be as big as he is on on YouTube or whatever. Yeah, and. Now, I guess YouTube is cracking down on people that are streaming Mortal Kombat. I don't know if you saw anything about that. No, I didn't see anything about that. YouTube, YouTube has a new filter in where it looks for like uh, blood. excessive excessive blood. And know. it will flag your video as soon as it catches it. But that's YouTube. That's so, nothing new. YouTube has... They've been out for the content creator for the longest time but, there's a reason or, they, they no longer guess, have the banner at the top of their site you know old school youtubers remember the banner it was youtube broadcast yourself they removed yeah. the broadcast yourself they don't want you to do that i guess now my point is youtube's rules seem to apply to whoever youtube wants them to apply to oh yeah absolutely like, somebody absolutely. like that can stay on youtube but you do something as as simple as streaming the wrong game and you get you get flagged for it. Yeah. Nobody is safe, by the way. It's not just a small YouTuber. Nobody is safe. The T-Series is working on removing, like, um, one of PewDiePie's most recent videos. So nobody is safe. And PewDiePie is the biggest YouTuber on the platform. But what I was going to say about the whole dog posting incident is, you know, me, I don't post too much on Twitter. I might, I'm good for, like, two or three tweets a day. But they're quality tweets. They're well thought out. And um, I had, I wanted to, you know, because this is kind of in my wheelhouse, I'm a Madden YouTuber, um, or at least I play mostly Madden. That's what people know me as. I wanted to put out my two cents on this thing. And it was something along the lines of, hey, I'm not going to judge this dude, but it is a beautiful thing when justice prevails. Okay. That's all I said. And here come the hordes of mindless children that are subscribers of this dude that begin hurling insults at me and stating I'm a racist. A racist of all things. Because <laughs> JML flows black. And I'm it's white. because you so hate white people. It's so, so that's all it is. <laughs> Even though at no point did I say anything ab yeah, about race. So here's the right. thing. You didn't this know gets, everything on social media is racist. It is. And this is what I was talking about. We couldn't have a conversation. It was much easier for this person or these people to pull a race card and just be done with the conversation instead of actually genuinely respond and have dialogue. It's really sad. I think Twitter's a beautiful thing, but it's also a terrible thing because we, we the, no longer have constructive dialogue. The really sad part is that they can't see past the fact that you're white to see <laughs> To actually look at your look at your your thought process on what you were saying, and try to think about it themselves. We're, exactly, and I never said anything about him. If anything, it was about the dogs. Dogs don't. Have, last time I checked, dogs don't have races. I'm advocating for the dog. Simple as that. <laughs> and I don't know how this uh, happened. I think the word racist gets thrown around way, way too much. Just this morning. I agree. I'm an hour into my work shift and I get the ESPN alert. Get this, an ESPN alert with Richard Mendenhall in the title. Okay, first of all. <laughs> God, Ben racist. First of all, I'm like, 
wait a second. I haven't seen this name for like 10 years. Is Richard Mendenhall joining the NFL again? And I go on to click on an article. It says Richard Mendenhall claims Ben Roethlisberger is racist against black people, quote unquote, has slave owner mentality. Um, first of all, aren't we talking about the same guy, Richard Mendenhall? Are you serious? Back in 2011? Yeah, exactly. This is, this is 2011, this is, Richard Mendenhall was whining about the fact that we killed, uh, I almost said Barack Obama, that we killed <laughs> Osama, <laughs> that we killed Osama bin Laden. He's oh, like, man. I don't get it. How can you guys be happy? Wait, what? Why not? That guy killed thousands and thousands of people. I mean, not him specifically, but people he people under him. He's responsible for it, and and Mendenhall should, you know, go live in Syria for a couple of weeks and see if he uh, if he doesn't like this country. This is, I think, this is Mendenhall's way of trying to be relevant again. Well, he's a up, he's a clown. You can't he's go on these attack clown. campaigns. Where you just blindly call someone racist. Okay, so what, you're a Steelers fan, Sarge. What was the last year that Richard Mendenhall played for the Steelers? Because I know at one point I he don't went, know he, he was he wasn't that great. Late. We we got in the the playoffs with him and he fumbles a lot. I I don't remember bad running backs. I remember Ray Lewis. You asked broke me about him. Willie Parker, Jerome Bettis, <laughs> Franco Harris. I remember Ray Lewis broke him, and he wasn't the same since. But. Ben Roethlisberger has been surrounded by, by black athletes his entire career. How can look, he be look, at his, look at his look at his wide receivers. How I don't understand how he could be <laughs> racist. He's he's not. It's just like and I said, then, it's Mendenhall trying to be relevant again. I, I don't know if he tried to be if he tried to be relevant because he attempted to delete those tweets. But obviously, if it's one thing we know about the internet is that once it's out there, Nothing it's out there. Deleted. It never gets deleted. So Somebody's got it somewhere. He tried to backpedal um, and say it was a figure of speech, but he actually pointed Just out... Just like he did in 2011, by the way. Pretty much, yeah. He, he tried reeling it back, but it didn't work. Um, yeah. So, but that's well, what I'm guy saying. Loser. It's, it's this mentality that I don't understand. Someone can call somebody else a racist, and people can get behind it. Like... There's a lot of people There's, right now in Richard Mendenhall's corner that are genuinely saying, yes, I agree, Big Ben is a, uh, I almost said rapist. Well, we do know he's that, but he's no, not No, he's racist. not. He was acquitted. Listen, all I know... None of the criminal charges went through, and he, the I'm court case years never old. went through I've never needed three other women to go to a bathroom with me, Sarge. I know what Big Ben You're is. You're also not, not rich or a celebrity. Innocent. He's not innocent, all right? But I know for a fact he is not racist. I know for a fact. You're one of those guys that thinks OJ's innocent, aren't you? Well, I mean, did the glove fit? Oh, <laughs> oh man. I'm not even... I'm going to just log off now. If you so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so... On this racism and discrimination thing, yeah, one of the one of the people I watch videos of on a regular basis is uh, Shoe on Head. Shoe on Head. Yeah, you ever, you're, this person? You're, what? you ever watch the Armored Skeptic videos? No, give me a quick okay, well, brief. Um, they basically do stuff about SJWs and stuff like that. Um, she did a video on. How child, how pe pedophiles are relabeling themselves to make themselves fit into LGBTQ? Really? Oh, God. Try to get sympathy. So they're not pedophiles anymore. They're MAPs, which stands What's for men attracted to preteen or pre adolescent. Yeah. That how is... about SMF, sick mother? Effort. <laughs> <laughs> so. The video, she's explaining what's going on in it, trying to bring awareness to it so that, you know, your kids, if they see these certain things on somebody's social media page, just trying to get a hold of them yeah. to block them and stay away from them. You know, mm -hmm. she's not trying to, ed she's trying Don't to educate whoever watches her videos. Get them off the street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
That's that's Raven's job. I'll get a hold of him so his FBI buddies can go take care of it. I am not in the FBI. We covered this in the past <laughs> podcast. So somebody came back defending these people, trying to say that she wasn't considering their rights when she made her video, which was basically just outing them for what they are. What the hell rights should they have? I don't know. This video was friggin' weird. I'll have to link it to you sometime so you can watch it. Why are we, not we, but why are people advocating for criminals? It's literally illegal things all the time? for an adult to have sex with a minor. What, what are they doing? What? So this, this kid that responded to her video. It. It's, a, it's in their brain. You have to empathize with them because it's a sickness that they can't help. Give me a break. So this kid's rebuttal was that they're not practicing pedophiles. Okay. So they like children, but they don't actually touch them. So what? They look at, they sit on their computer and find pictures of kids and get well, happy. They go through the Toys R Us catalog and pick the ones they want, and they they get their jollies off on that. Dude, that is so creepy, dude. It's so weird, right? I fear it's for still kids. wrong. I, I, you know, it's still wrong to me. You know what's it crazy is, wrong. is um, I don't know where how it is where you guys live, but um, every once in a while I check into the news for uh, Illinois, especially the neighborhood that I came from before coming to Las Vegas, just because I want to touch base and see you know how laws are changing and stuff. They just instituted a new law back home. And I'm not going to say the neighborhood because I still have family that lives out there and I know that no information is safe. But they just put in a new law, thankfully it's not in Nevada yet, where sex offenders no longer have to have placards on their property. Well, I mean, the whole, the whole point but, of the placard is that you know who to watch out for when your kid comes back saying their butthole hurts. But here's the thing. There is a caveat to it. All they have to do is, on Halloween... They're not allowed to have their porch lights lit. That's, well, that's all. Dumb. It's literally written in writing like that. That's dumb. That's got to be the, the second dumbest law I've ever heard. Yeah. Tell me about it. As if, <laughs> as if, so, so all the law does is ban them from handing out candy on Halloween. Yeah, well, the law implements or uh, assumes that the only time that this creep is going to have contact with kids is potentially on Halloween. But if he's a sex offender, this is something he did probably outside of Halloween multiple times. Now, the thing with being labeled as a sex offender is that you can get labeled as a sex offender for soliciting prostitution. Yep. And you still have to have that placard out front. You may not have diddled kids, but your neighbors don't know that. Yep. So they, they did away with the placard for whatever reason. You might have paid for a reason. handy once and got in trouble for it, and now you have to have a placard outside your house that makes you look like a child molester. Yep. And I bet you well, somebody should... that took it to a Supreme Court and complained that the placard in front of their property was offensive to them. They didn't want to well, be looked should, down upon. Uh, they should uh, kind of distinguish, too, because, you know, between, like Sarge said, you know, if it was if it was an adult on an adult and even, you know, there's a lot of, you know, 17 year old seniors in high school who get together with their 19 year old college freshman, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, mm -hmm. and the parents get upset and they get them charged with statutory rape in their life's room, you know? Yeah. But that's on a state by state basis. Um, here in Nevada, I, no, I understand, the age of I consent is 16. That, but... So, which that's insane to me. I don't understand that one, but yeah, that varies but, uh, state state by state. But that, ha that happened to my brother. He he was, I don't know, he was like twenty years old, and he was dating a seventeen year old. Mm -hmm. like three years difference. Any other anything after high school, three years difference is whatever. But because she was still in high school, her parents got mad at my brother and filed statutory charges on him. Now he's a sex offender. And that follows you for life, right? Does that ever yeah, get expunged? He, he can't. When he got out of jail, when he got out of jail, he went to go live with my brother. My brother had a kid. He had to move out because he's not allowed to be within so many yards of kids. Oh, wow! Yeah, so then he had no place to stay. So he goes back to a halfway house. Ends up back in jail. Dang, dude. Yeah, I mean, 
I'm not advocating his actions. He's he was an idiot for getting in that situation to begin with. But you know, stuff happens sometimes. You don't think about this stuff when you're actually in a relationship that seems normal when you're only like three years apart. Yeah. Yeah, but twenty and seventeen is a lot different and forty and fifteen, you know? That those are the people who they really need to just like kick their ass. Where twenty and seventeen maybe isn't great, but I mean, it's not like the person's trying to harm them. It's and I can understand why parents would be upset, but at the same time, the two people care about each other. And where when they're forty and fifteen, maybe that's the case, but it's just wrong. So full and disclosure. Full disclosure. My dad, Just kidding. my dad, when I was 14, married a woman. My stepmom was 17. Hmm. So I was 14. My dad had kids well after he was 18. It was a different time back then, though. Different laws. No. I mean, it, it was in... I think it's still the same way in Virginia. You can have an adult relationship with a 16-year-old as long as the parents sign off on it. They had to sign a waiver. See, here in Nevada, it's uh, it's almost similar, whereas, except the only difference is the parents don't have to provide consent. At 16, she can provide consent, which, again, is insane to me. Now, in the military, whatever state you're in, their legal age doesn't matter. The Army's legal age matters. Because the Army's legal age nationwide is 18. If Which you get caught, right. if you get, the soldier has to be 18 before they can get to their first duty station. You can sign up for the Army at 17, sometimes 16, but you can't actually, I don't think you can actually go to your first duty station until after you graduated high school. And most people graduate high school at 18. Um, so, if you're 18 and you're in a different state and you're dating a 17-year-old, even though it's legal in that state, the army can still file UCMJ charges and you still go to prison. That's, That's really ticky tack, though. I feel like you're it's it's a really fine line because you're dealing with multiple states, multiple different jurisdictions, multiple different uh, requirements and regulations set up. Um, the thing is, you don't get in the army if you violate that and it's legal in the state but not legal in the army. They don't go through the state's jurisdiction. They go through the UCMJ, which is court martial, and they go it's uniform code of military justice. Okay. Is what UCMJ is. So they don't try you in the state. They try you through the army. So it's a federal offense. That's scary. Yeah. yeah. So and that's going to follow follow that person throughout their whole life. There's no way that gets expunged. I mean, most people wouldn't wouldn't do that because the age difference was like a year maybe two whatever but there's a lot of stuff like if you are convicted just, there's a lot of stuff that you cannot do uh i think yeah. like, you can't vote you can't have a firearm um i mean you can get that stuff back but you have to really fight for it like yeah. i mean the firearm thing you're probably not going to get back but you, you get can't your voting get rights your back job well yeah i mean nowadays even mcdonald's has background checks so they're gonna no no matter where you apply, you're gonna get a background check done, um, and and well, that will come up. Maybe a gas station would let you like you know work there, and it's like, <laughs> but then kids go in gas stations. Bro, I had one of the most negative experiences at my gas station. So, you own a gas station at, at one of the gas stations I go to by my house. Okay, and which is uh, where. I'm not telling you where I live, obviously. I need I need exact address so I know which gas station to stay away from. No, that's not happening. <laughs> that's not happening. Um, Why don't you just take random pictures around your house so that way we can I try? I think that shows you there. don't trust him. Number Listen, one, that shows you don't trust him. I don't know. I don't know if this is a southern thing that's slowly starting to permeate its way over to the west coast, but since when? Do I pull up to a gas pump and the atten- there's an actual attendant there that touches my car and pumps the fuel for me? New Jersey, you're not allowed to pump your own fuel. 
Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's, and, uh, it's like a southern closer. eastern thing that's coming over to the west coast, and I don't like it. I don't know if you know this or not, but New Jersey is not a southern state. I just said east coast, the eastern, <laughs> and the southern. <laughs> Listen, open your ears. But so why can't open you your pump eyes. your eyes? <laughs> yeah, why can't you pump your own gas in New Jersey? I don't know. It's state law. You can't pump your own gas. Interesting. They have an attendant that comes out and pumps your gas for you. You know, you don't even get out of the car. I don't know if I like that. I do in some ways, but I don't because you know, I think it's a pain. See, the lazy ass kicker in me thinks <laughs> that's a great thing because then I don't have to get off my ass to go pump my own gas. <laughs> yeah, but then <laughs> the you got. Cheap- the then cheap sergeant pay... ass kicker in me says, I don't want to pay this guy a tip for pumping my gas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's that's what I was going to get to, is I'm already paying money for the gas. I didn't ask for this service, and it kind of caught me off guard because this is the first time that uh, I've ever had this happen here in Vegas, and I wasn't expecting it. This guy had a uniform on, but I thought he was just like cleaning up around the pumps. I didn't know he was the actual attendant, so he... I park and turn the car off, and he's opening up my my gas cap and all that. I'm like, "Whoa, what are you doing?" He's like, "He's like, I got it, bro." I'm like, "I'm okay." So then I'm trying to think. <laughs> I'm trying to think like, okay, like shoot. I know when I eat at a restaurant, I know how much I'm supposed to tip. But like, how does tipping work for gas? Do you slide him a couple bucks? Do you slide him a ten spot? What do you do? I'm not. I'm not uh, privy to this information because again, I've never had to go through it. But well, if you're six figure government salary, I think you can. <sighs> you could probably drop so a couple annoying. hundreds on there and be good. You're At so least annoying. A couple bucks. How much do you? So how much would you have tipped? Well, when I, I was give him, I tipped like a buck, two bucks. I give him two or three. Two or three Depends bucks. On how much gas I need? Like if I'm going from. Albany to a Devils game and I have to get gas, then I need a full tank of gas. I'm probably close to empty by the time I get there. Uh, I'd probably give him like three or four bucks. Okay. Kind of along the lines of what I gave him, but uh, I probably will not be going back to that station. I like pumping my own gas. I don't know. It, it's just weird to me. Was well, it just uh, the one? Did it have like a full service pump? Because some have self service <laughs> and full service. I'm really not sure, Chris. I, I remember um, being super tired, coming home from work. I, I, my car was kind of low, and I knew I knew that I needed gas to get to work the next day. Uh, so I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to get it taken care of today, so the car's ready to go tomorrow. I wasn't paying attention. You know, I, I always pull up to the same pump because this gas station is never busy. I always pull up to the same pump, and I know the drill. So I'm getting out of my car, and I see this guy already pumping gas. Like, dude, do you even know what kind of grade I use? What are you doing? What are you doing touching uh, my car? Typically, they'll ask you, I guess. That didn't happen for you. but <laughs> like, like When they come up to the window, they right just like... Well, I mean, you probably get regular... Un- oh, you probably get no. super unleaded because you My car got, only uh, takes you premium. That, you get those big bucks. No. No. You don't have, you don't have to, to, to get the cheap well, gas like a You guys are so shelter. annoying with this. You guys always make me out to be something I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Oh man. Well, when you, uh, <laughs> you, you, Mr. Uppity over here, has to get the premium gas, notice that premium gas. It's not me that's uppity. It's my car. And why does that even matter? Why? Why does that make you upset? <laughs> no, it just shows. What does it make it Chris upset? What doesn't that? make Chris mad? Because you're superior to regular gas, obviously. <laughs> a regular gas is too too low for you. It's too it's beneath you. You can't touch exactly it. Exactly what I'm saying, dude. You are too much, Chris. You are too much. I I, I really cannot wait for the day I meet you, and I'm, I'm gonna give you like a sleeper hold. I'm gonna let you fade out real quick, and then let you come back to, and then put you back in a sleeper hold. That's something I wanted to ask. What do you think everybody would think about doing a uh, a live video version of this if we all like somehow got into Vegas? 
to hang out for a weekend oh, or yeah. something. No, yeah, I mean, if yeah, uh, I'm cool with that, I don't want to do. I'm not going to get on like Cam here. No, 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 he's not saying we each get on a face cam. He's talking about like if we ever did a meetup in Vegas, the three yeah, of us. Yeah, I'd be cool with that. Yeah, you know that'd be cool to. I'd have to probably get a couple more mics for us. Um, but yeah, we could do a a podcast right here. You know, that'd be that'd be really cool. Or maybe from then, one of the sports bars can't... in Vegas. Because I know you and I have talked about it before. Yeah. Not specifically for the podcast, but talked about, you know, coming down and meeting up or something. And I've already cleared it with the wife. <laughs> She's going to be good with the kids for a couple of days if I go to Vegas. And I know I know Chris is good with it. He doesn't have to ask anyone for approval because he'll never find love, love in his life. So you just have to, Chris, <laughs> you just have to restock your mayonnaise. Wrong. <laughs> We stuck your mayo. I don't, I don't have a YouTube channel that I flirt with the two females who come in my. Uh... Okay, all right, Chris. I don't flirt with anyone. <laughs> Relax. I'm a guy with a Wrong. capture device and a Wrong. mic, and I play Xbox. There's nothing Wrong. special about everybody me. Everybody knows that everybody on YouTube. Colby is... will hear this, and he will back me up. Except 100%. for me. Whatever. But yeah, I'm I'm totally down for doing a Vegas meetup. And you meet know up. the two I'm talking about. I don't even have to name them because I wouldn't do that to them. But I I won't name them. But you know the two. I have I have no idea what you're talking about, Chris. But um, I'd be more <laughs> the than two willing. Two females that come to your stream that you flirt with. There's more than two females that come to my stream. You rat. Is there? Well, yes. Well, I don't. I think know. I've only, I think I only know of. It's the internet. So how how can you ever be for sure? You know what I mean. I don't know. What do your analytics say? Uh, I don't even know. It's, it says like one point two percent female. The rest are like males from India or something. But um, but yeah, man. Um, I'm totally totally down with uh, doing a, a a meetup in Vegas. If you guys ever choose to come down here, my my ideal is that you guys don't actually pay for your flights over. Um, hopefully we get enough on this podcast or through Emily's shirt sales for at least one of your flights to be covered. And then I can probably do half Z's with the other person. Um, but we're, we're going to figure something out. You know, the three of us got to, got to sit down and have some chow and get some, get some steak in us, you know, do a podcast. I, I think it'd be a good Double time. R wants to go get his spanking at the, uh, <laughs> no, we're not going to heart attack grill. grill as much as I know you, you want to go there. No, you want your spanking. Chris, stop you it. You enjoyed that. Stop it. We're not going there. We're going to have a good time in Vegas. Lord <laughs> willing, that happens sooner than later. But, oh, uh, that, that, that actually reminds me of something I was going to talk about that I ran into today. What? I was... Tr- You're what? I was, I was watching somebody stream, and... We're sitting in there. He's streaming on three different platforms at the same time. He's got Twitch and something else and YouTube going. Yeah. And he's the guy's bitching about only ha- only having fifty viewers in his YouTube stream. Yep. He's whining about it. I'm like, I can't even watch this anymore because if I had fifty viewers in my YouTube stream, I would think somebody had brought in a bot. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's uh, it's a like, different I'd mentality. Over, you know, I'd be, be I'd be excited for it. Just, People grow and it changes like, their mentality. They they lose that uh, humility, well, don't, unfortunately. Don't you remember the one guy who we saw said, "I don't want to be uh, friends with my streamers. I don't want this. I don't want to yeah. get to know them." He's like, he's like, I'm not. Wasn't that raining say... ravens? No, that wasn't me. He's like, uh, I forget what he said, but he said this at a Twitch channel. Them. He's like. I'm not, not going to say that I'm better, better than everybody than anyone, or that but, I have a God uh, complex. I'm kind of like but... above you, and I, I really don't want to have any contact. I don't want my subscribers to have anything in common with me, and I don't want to talk to them off stream. Yeah. That... Like, okay. Good to know. And I think his channel went to hell after he said that. Yeah, he and lost I a lot think... of uh, I can imagine. supporters, and, and I, don't I don't think, think he even... he's on there anymore. No, he either. doesn't stream anymore. That He killed his career in that one um, panel meeting, so... <laughs> yeah, man. Humility will take you a long way. Well, and, that uh, was a stupid. That was stupid to say. I mean, you can say, "Well, I'm." Un- you can say, "I'm uncomfortable." 
I'm uncomfortable with my streamers or viewers knowing. There's a million different ways he could have better articulated that. He went yeah. with the one bad way. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so anyway, pride comes before the fall is what the Bible says. And uh, I'd say it still holds true. Um, with that being said, I want to say thank you to Sergeant and Chris for joining us on our third two and a half cents podcast. Uh, we're going to have this out to you Saturday. Well, if you're listening to this right now, it's going to be Saturday evening for you guys in the East Coast and Saturday afternoon for you guys on the West Coast. And I uh, just want to say thank you guys for so much for uh, making this podcast what it is. If you liked it, definitely leave a like on it, but also leave a comment or two. Um, on the, in Hopefully the comments. it keeps growing the way it has. Cause... Yeah, absolutely. Leave a comment. Um, send your questions over to my Twitter DM and... We'll, we'll try to get you involved in this podcast as much as we want, uh, as, as much as you want, you know, so really the sky's the limit. So again, thank you for everything. We will see you guys next week for episode four, the two and a half cent podcast. Good night, everyone. Go Steelers.